This video is partly sponsored by Grammarly. Mm, good morning. It's a very special day today because it is the six month birthday of the iPhone 14 series. And I've had this guy, the 14 Pro Max, in my pocket uh, since it launched as my daily driver, my everyday phone. Although I wouldn't be a proper tech YouTuber creator person if I didn't carry around at least one or two Android phones as well. It's kind of striking just how many good alternatives there are to the iPhone these days. With not quite the A16 beating, but still very powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chips, we have one inch camera sensors, up to 200 megapixel resolutions, periscope zooms, bigger batteries, faster charging, and even some fun flipping folding form factors. Try saying that five times quickly. But despite all this and the amazing alternatives, why do I keep coming back to this? Because Apple pays me. That might not actually be true. In fact, as far as I know, Apple never pays for content. So people uh, who write in the comments, like you've been paid for by Apple, Never. Or well, at least I haven't, sadly. Also, say hello to Sylvie. The truth is, though, I really don't have any brand loyalty. My only loyalty is, well, to my cat, and I suppose my wife as well. And I'm in the very privileged position to have access to all these amazing flagship phones. And compared to the Android competition, the iPhone is starting to feel just a little bit boring iOS 16 continues to have a few too many niggling bugs. The lightning port is a pain in the ass. It's one more cable for me to carry and it's slow for transferring larger files. And really it's the main reason I don't bother shooting ProRes because it's so bloody hard to get off the phone. And I still don't know why I can't pause video recordings. Android phones can do it. It also still seems weird to me that on this Pro Max phone, you still can't multitask or have split screen modes. And to be honest, as someone who actually used the 13 Pro Max as their everyday phone before this, uh, and my one could probably do with a screen replacement after it slipped out of my pocket, always use protection, boys and girls. The 14 Pro Max really isn't that much different, and subjectively, I know some people prefer the look of the 13th camera. So the iPhone is not perfect. And actually, I do enjoy using my S23 Ultra more. It's more fun, there's more modes, features, camera options. And if you're in the Galaxy ecosystem with their buds and tabs and books and all the nice multi-control and quick share software features, Samsung really is giving Apple and their ecosystem some proper competition. Have you heard of Grammarly? I knew the name, but I'd never actually used it myself before. Although when they actually reached out and asked if they could sponsor a video, I figured I should probably give it a go. Although when I actually told my wife I was working with Grammarly, she was really excited. She's been using this for years and she was like, it's the best thing ever. And she's not wrong. So I signed up, I followed the handy little intro tour that shows you how it all works, and then you can simply create or upload a document on their website and let it do its thing on your copy that way, although most of the time I use it when I'm in Word or a Google Doc or an email. It's so easy to use. Just tap this little Grammarly icon at the bottom right to pop up its suggestions for correctness, for clarity, engagement, and best of all, delivery. It can suggest different tones, which I think is brilliant. I mean, as an English person, pretty much every email contains a sorry or hope that's okay. So I love the tone suggestions you get with Grammarly Premium, especially when it gives me suggestions to be more confident. And all it's really doing is helping me communicate more effectively and also make fewer mistakes. I mean, even if you don't have a writing job per se, one word can change the entire tone of an email. And Grammarly suggestions have been an enormous help. Uh, I actually originally wrote big help and they're like, no, Tom, you can do better, expand your vocabulary. It's an enormous help, which it is. Over 30 million people use Grammarly and it's a completely free online writing assistant. I mean, you've got your browser extensions, your desktop editors, mobile apps, or you could just use their website. And the best bit is Grammarly is completely free. So why not give it a try? And if you fancy upgrading to Grammarly Premium with all the features, then click my link in the description below to get 20% off. So get started and boost your productivity with Grammarly today. However, despite saying all of that, it is still the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I carry with me every day in my pocket. And there's five, maybe six main reasons why. And the first one is actually because of this, the MacBook. For the longest time, I would edit and work and game on my desktop Windows PC, which I do still sometimes, uh, or a Dell XPS laptop, until the M1 MacBook came out. That was a game changer. And since then, I've done pretty much everything, including all my work and all my edits on a MacBook Pro. I'm currently using the 16 inch uh, with an M2 Max. But using them together, we start to see some of that Apple magic. I use AirDrop every single day for transferring photos and video clips. I can copy some text or a URL on my laptop and then instantly paste it on my iPhone. I can accept and take calls on my Mac. And I can even use the iPhone as a super duper high quality webcam. And that's just the start. If you add an Apple Watch into the mix, you can use it as a remote viewfinder for your iPhone's camera. 
Then you've got your AirPods and your iPads, plus all their software like iMessage and FaceTime and iCloud, AirDrop, Apple Tags, and their own apps as well like Apple TV, Music, Fitness, and their arcade games. Some of these things may not be a big deal for you. Like for me, the whole thing around wanting an iPhone for the green text bubbles with iMessage just isn't a big deal. I rarely use iMessage. It's all about WhatsApp and maybe a bit of Telegram for me. But either way, for me, and I think for most people, it is that lovely warm ecosystem that keeps us coming back to the iPhone. Regardless if in many ways on paper, the Android rivals are better phones. Okay, number two, video. This, I'm actually shooting it on the iPhone in cinematic mode, 4K 30 right now. Uh, also using the inbuilt mic, so let me know how that sounds. I think for cinematic mode, nothing beats this. And to be honest, while other phones come very close, I don't think there's a better overall camera system for video than the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. The stabilization, the seamless transition between the lenses, ProRes, I can shoot 4K60 with the selfie camera. And while it does lack some features, like there's no 8K30, which you can do on this, and also the long range video quality is also much better on the S23. For me, I still think iPhone is king when it comes to video. And since video is such a big part of my life, it does keep making me come back to the iPhone. For example, I shot almost all of my B-roll for this Tesla video recently on the iPhone. But while this isn't as versatile as, say, the S20 Ultra, and I love a one-inch sensor like the latest Xiaomi's and Vivo's, the iPhone's camera is still fantastic. The dynamic range, the fast focusing, the really stable 4K60 footage. So many creators now just use the iPhone, which I think is fantastic when I've got a three or four thousand pound camera on my desk, but I leave it there and I pick up my iPhone. Number three, apps. This is not the night and day difference we see on tablets between the iPad and the Android rivals like the Galaxy Tab. Nonetheless, the advantage of the iPhone with its App Store compared to the fragmented Android competition with the Google Play Store is developers generally prioritize the iPhone. It's usually the first to get app updates or new features. And in my experience, things like sharing IG stories shot on the iPhone tend to be higher quality than if I share it on an Android. Although this can be kind of hard to quantify and it does vary between Android phones. But generally, for the best and most optimized app experience, the iPhone is still the better option. Although I do miss the customization and the ability to sideload and all the flexibility you get with Android. Number four, battery life. And I am actually working on a big 2023 flagship battery comparison video. I'm just waiting for a few more stragglers who launched later than expected. So make sure you have subscribed and stay tuned to see how this does fare against the new kids on the block. But the 14 Pro Max is still one of the best phones for battery life. And I'm usually left with about 35% by 11 p.m. at night when I toddle off to bed, getting around eight hours of screen on time. And to be honest, it's the main reason I use this over the regular iPhone 14 Pro. I definitely prefer the smaller size of the 14 Pro, but the battery advantage of the Pro Max is just more important for me. And after six months using it every day and charging it every night, apparently I still have 100% battery health. I do wish we had faster charging, but I like MagSafe. I really like this MagSafe Duo charger pad thingy. I just bring that everywhere for my phone, my AirPods and my Apple Watch. Plus I carry a backup MagSafe battery pack as well. But yes, I am aware how very expensive all this is. Okay, number five. And let's talk about actually using the phone over the last six months. And obviously some of the big reasons I stick with the iPhone are for the camera, the battery, the ecosystem, the ease of transferring photos and videos between my uh, phone and my Mac, the fact that I use AirPods. It's an iPhone, it's consistent, it's reliable, it looks great and I love the rounded corners which makes it much more comfortable to hold than say the S20 the Ultra with its squared off edges. The alert slider is handy for quickly switching between silent and loud modes. The speakers are great, the screen gets incredibly bright and I know not everyone loves it but I really like the dynamic island, having little audio waveforms or updates for your Uber. It turns out you very rarely actually interact with it and press it, but as a little notification menu, it is handy. Obviously, it is quite a chunky cutout, so you do notice it when you full screen videos or if you play games, but the flip side of that is we do have best in class face unlocking. So yeah, it's an iPhone. It's nothing particularly exciting, nothing particularly new except the dynamic island, which is why you could say it's also a little bit boring. I would love a folding or flipping iPhone, something just a little bit different. And then number six, there's, well, the six years of support. Even Samsung only offer four years of Android updates plus an extra year of security. Uh, you've got a pretty good trade-in program. And a lot of my friends who use iPhone, they do go to Apple retail stores and get their geniuses to transfer files or fix problems. But I'm not here to convince you to buy an iPhone. You should buy whatever phone works best for you and what fits in your budget. I'm just 
kind of explaining why I have been sticking with an iPhone despite all the fantastic competition. The thing is you really can't go wrong with any new flagship phone, but for my work use, my everyday workflow, this just makes sense. But what about you? What phone are you using right now? And are you tempted to get the latest iPhones or do you think they have got a little bit boring? Let me know what you make of the iPhone in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jam.